Welcome to All Things Financial with Jack Driscoll. Each week, Jack takes on all things you thought were hard to understand about your finances and makes it fun, easy, but most of all interesting. From insurance to the best way to save your money and squeeze the most out of the dollars you put aside for your rainy day. And now, you have a friend in the money business. Here's your host, Jack Driscoll. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of All Things Financial. What I wanted to talk to you about was this issue of retirement planning. What I find is this. No one has enough money, no one saves enough money, and no one thinks they can retire on time. But here's what I want to share with you, and I want to spend the show on this. I used to teach this around actually 30 years ago. It was the concept of saving money. Now, that's a radical idea. The concept of saving money solves retirement planning problems. The problem I'm having and seeing so much, it's so prevalent, is people are doing retirement planning at the time of retirement. And they'll think five years in advance is enough time in advance. I'm thinking, no, retirement planning or financial planning is a lifelong endeavor. If you start early enough and do it long enough, you'll find you won't have to be taking the risks in retirement that so many current retirees are having to face. It's really because they haven't saved enough. If they've saved enough money, they don't have to take all these risks. They don't have to maybe even be in the stock market or try to do all these high income guarantees and fixed income for life options. They don't have to listen to any of that. Any of those bells and whistles, the fancy things, a person that has saved more than they need can actually relax. They can actually be happy and comfortable and content knowing they could take a very low amount out of their assets or they only have to earn a very low interest rate and it's still enough. Why? Because they might have saved two or three times more than what they need. You'll say that's impossible or that's, you know, you don't understand, but I do. I've dealt with families for 40 years, young families, old families, all generations. And here's what I'm, I'm here to share with you. No one's saving money. Everyone's spending everything that they make. Now, when I say that carte blanche statement, there are exceptions to both of those rules. No one's saving any money. And you'll say, well, yes, we are. We're putting money into aside in the 401k. And others will say, yes, we are. We're truly saving 10% of our income or whatever. So you'll prove me wrong in the exception of the rule. And that's wonderful. And when I say no one's saving any money or no one's saving enough money, that's the rule that I'm finding. But with every rule, we're looking at 95% of the rule and 5% are the exceptions. What I want to do is change that around, that everyone is saving money and everyone is saving enough money. So I want to change the rule around to 95% have started early, started young, saving over a long period of time, and it'll soften the risks you have to take in retirement because you have an under amount of your savings. You're under withheld and under, you know, you're underfunded. So here's the issue. Number one, what I'd like to ask and petition everyone is wherever you are in life, whatever stage you are, why don't we try just a 1% rule? Now, the rule I'm shooting for is 10%, but why don't we try just a 1% rule? Here's what I'm asking. Wherever you are in your savings and wherever you are in your life journey, whether you're 20 years old, 16 years old, 60 years old, or 80 years old, wherever you are, I'm petitioning for you to just say, I'll do without an additional 1% of whatever my income or my pay is. 
So wherever you are, I'm just saying set aside 1% and live without it. Do without it. With that, that means if you have a $50,000 salary combined with you and your wife, and that's $4,500 a month, and I'm, I'm looking at the gross, and I do want you to look at the gross, you could do it either way, but everything that you earn, everything that's withheld from that, the only thing I might not count is maybe taxes, because you'd have to think that money was never yours to start. But everything else, your 401k deductions and things like that, no, they're deductions by choice. So I would say, you, even if you want to do it this way, whatever your paychecks are, let's work with the net. And that means whatever you get in your paycheck. Let's just work with that to keep it simple. I just want you to set up a fund somewhere, a savings account, direct deposit, something direct. That every time you get a pay, or every month if you want to do it that way, you're setting aside 1% of it and not spending it. I don't mean paying all your bills and the 1% that's left afterwards. So if you're in a 401k, all I'm asking is up the contribution by 1%. Whether they match or not is not important. So when we're talking $4,500 a month for this example, let's say, we're only looking at, you know, 1%, not 10%. I'm not looking at $450 a month to live without. I'm looking at $45 a month maybe to live without, which is only about $11 a week, which again is only about $1.50 a day. So here's what I'm asking everyone to do. I'm asking everyone to start toward a goal. Change something. Start early. Save long. And what I'm looking for is, we've, we, I established a 401k plan about three years ago in a company. That, as you know, is an automatic savings plan. And what happens is, you as an employee elect to withhold a portion of your pay and not be taxed on that portion of your pay. It goes straight into a savings account. And some Times there are mutual fund accounts inside those 401ks and you have different choices and you might get confused. And if you get confused, you might not do it at all, which is the worst mistake. Some people will ask me in, in these 401ks or mutual funds or anything that you go into when they're not saving any money now, and they're saying, well, I might put money in there and then lose it. And I don't want to lose money. And I'll ask them and I'll ask you too. If you're not doing any savings now, whether it's in a 401k or anywhere else, and you start to save and you lose the money, what's the alternative? You're not saving now and you're not having anything left in your checkbook at the end of the month, so what are you doing with it? You're splurging it or spending it, you're losing it. So it's getting lost anyway. No matter what you put into the investment plans, the 401k plans, or even set aside into the bank and the savings account, whatever you have left over is more than you have by not saving. So that risk argument just doesn't hold water when we're looking at money that if it's not put in there, it's blown somewhere else, lost, and you don't even know where. So even if you put a dollar in and you lose 50 cents of it, and you still have 50 cents later, you're still better off by 50 cents. So don't fear that too much. Now when we get to that and we up this 1%, I installed this 401k plan about three years ago, and the employees didn't want to contribute and the employer helped them. No employees want to contribute sometimes because they say, we can't afford to do without any of our income. We're, making it, we're having a hard time paying our bills anyway. Well, I'm here to share with you that without 1% of your pay, you'll have just as hard a time paying your bills. It doesn't get easier or harder by 1%. So do yourself a favor, pay yourself first. The rule is pay yourself first in financial planning and saving because retirement is coming. College funding is coming. So when we look at you not having enough assets or account size 
to get your kids through college. What do you think is causing this loan crisis today, folks? Nobody's talking about it. What do you think is causing it? When children were born, we didn't start savings accounts that said, and we all heard the stories and thought they'd be too high, it's going to cost $100,000 or $150,000 to put your kids through school by the time they're age 18. And everybody said, well, that's impossible. So we did nothing. And then when college time came, and it did come, so by doing nothing didn't prevent the college nightmare from coming. It came. And when the kids were ready and they worked hard in school and they wanted to go to college, yeah, we found a way. And you know how? We put loans on the backs of the kids and sometimes on the backs of the parents who are now 60 and 65 with mortgages on your homes. Why? It all goes back to when you were in your 20s and your 30s. You didn't start saving, you postponed, you procrastinated, you hoped it would never come. You said you were so tight on your bills you couldn't afford anything. But guess what happened all along those years? You got pay raises. You didn't do anything effectively with those pay raises to help solve this problem. So even if you could afford no savings back then, then you get your 5% or 2% pay raise. Guess what you did not do? You did not set aside the pay raise and keep your budget as tight as it was before. You decided to loosen up your budget, then benefit then and suffer later. So my suggestion to you is when you pay off a car loan, when you pay off a credit card loan, save that money that you just freed up. You have a $50 a month credit card bill and you paid it off. Save that money. So when you start thinking about this and you're trying to accumulate dollars like a snowball, you need to start having the mind awareness. When you get a tax refund, stop spending those. That's not money from the government. That's money that was taken out of your pay that should have been in your income, that should have been put to use for your future. You're blowing it unnecessarily and you're going to pay for it later. Ask any retiree now. Everybody's telling us we don't have enough money to retire and, we don't, and we're all trying to retire too early. Most people don't have enough money to retire. That's why they're flocking to these 6% and so guaranteed income for life. And that's why they're doing that because they don't have enough money so they're trying to ramp up the income. Otherwise, they won't be able to retire. Or worse yet, won't be able to retire early, which is what they really want to do, which is probably the biggest mistake many people can make. So I need everybody to back up here. Be responsible. Start setting aside savings for yourselves. Start doing without little bits now along the way that you won't notice so that you don't get hit with the big wallops later on a hundred thousand dollar college loan that you have a mortgage going into your own retirement because you didn't plan early so back to this one percent rule it's really a ten percent rule pay yourself first what i want you to do at the beginning of every month at the beginning of every pay jump that savings up 1%. If it's in a 401k, it's easy. If you're not participating, start participating. If you are participating, up it by 1%. If you could do more, don't wait, do it. The benefit from doing these savings plans, pay yourself now savings plans, are you don't see the money. The reason most savings plans fail or never start is because you see the money. Once you see the paycheck, it's really hard to move $45 or $1.50 a day even out. But if you never see the money because you set up an automatic withdrawal out of your checking account into a mutual fund plan, and yes, folks, you could start mutual fund plans or bank savings plans into savings accounts for as little as probably $25 a month. So do it. Some of them might be 50 a month. Whatever they are, they're cheap. And you can start an automatic savings plan that you never see the money. You never see it transfer. It automatically transfers out of your checking account once a month. You could do it on the first of the month or 15th or whatever you want to do. But what happens is you're 
not seeing the money, you're starting to save money, put some money aside. The key is the action, not the results, but the action. So you set aside a habit and you just do it once and it automates itself. So it's not like you have to build a habit every month that you have to remember to save, which would be a good habit. But it's a habit, otherwise, where you're starting something, you fill out a card, you fill out an application, and then you automate that decision over and over again every month. So it's the 1% decision. And the next year, you won't notice the difference. Things will be just as hard as if you had that 1%. And what happens with that 401k plan that I installed about three years ago, and we just closed down that plan because of retirement of the owner, one of the employees saw they had $8,000 in their plan and they said, oh my goodness, where did this come from? But guess what else they said? Oh good, I really need that money right now. Oh my goodness, and there they go. So they kill the plan that was automated for them, succeeded in spite of their bad habits, and then when the money became available, their bad habits are going to trump that plan and dissolve that benefit. So our habits are our own worst enemies sometimes. That's why we want to automate this thing. So in your 401k, you up it by 1%, you'd never think about it again. The next year, what I just said is going to prove itself out. You didn't notice. Things are just as hard as they were the year before. And I want you to do it again. I actually want you to do it every year forever, but you can't and you won't because that math won't work after a while. So the rule I look at is this. If a person out of money that was already taxed, all of it's already taxed, then set aside 10% of their take-home income over at least 30 years, so if you start young enough, you could possibly have enough to buffer a retirement which would otherwise be very fragile, very limited, and underfunded to an overfunded retirement where you might be in a level of comfort and not have to take risks in retirement because you're taking your risks and suffering in little bits every day and every week all along the way so you don't have to suffer later. That's the rule that we're seeing. Nobody is saving money and nobody is saving enough. That is what's causing our college funding and our college debt crisis. That is what's causing our probably what caused the mortgage crisis, although I haven't studied that, and that is what's causing our here-to-come retirement crisis. Why do I say retirement crisis? Because people are banking on that they'll have enough to retire, and they're retiring early. 62, even 65 is probably early right now. The normal Social Security retirement date is age 66 and a half to 67 for most people. Listen folks, when Social Security was passed, originally created, Social Security normal retirement date, only retirement date, was 65. Guess what the life expectancy was when Social Security was passed? The average life expectancy was age 63. We've evolved to the point where the average life expectancy is age 85, and I know many families, and you do too, that have family members living into their 90s and even up to 100. How in the world are we supposed to plan and expect that that's going to be enough money that whatever we had at 60 to last us through our 90s when we never see another dollar, whatever we take into retirement once we stop our paycheck is all we'll ever have and it is supposed to last us for another 30 years or 35 years? Come on folks, that defies logic. Everybody in retirement wants to retire early. They can come up with as many excuses, and so can you, as you want. 
I want to enjoy it while I'm early and while I'm healthy and while I'm young enough and while I'm this. You could say whatever you want. But I'm telling you, you can enjoy a very, very nice lifestyle while still working through age 67 and have enough money and pile all that money in and use it as catch-up money and make sure you're secure in retiring. But the other thing you can do is follow my 1% pay yourself first plan early in life and your 10% which is what we're trying to build up to, of after-tax money. So 10% means 15% withdrawal rate in a 401k because you'll still owe taxes on that, or 10% after that. You could start at any stage in life and make this work. You could be 50, 55, 60, it doesn't matter. You could be 10, you could be 20, it doesn't matter. You need to follow these rules. Number one, the 10%, you pay yourself first. Number two, when you pay off all your credit cards and mortgages, even later in life, you take those savings, those money savings, and you begin banking them. You begin saving them. You begin accumulating them and not blowing them. Don't let them come into your current budget. When you get tax refunds, when you get a bonus, when you get a discount at a store for a coupon, first off, don't stop, don't shop in stores. That's one way to blow all your money. And the other way is think that a discount or a coupon is actually saving you money. No, it isn't. It's enticing you to go spend only 50% of what you wouldn't have spent at all, which means you lost 100% of that 50% that would have stayed in your pocket. So stay away from those coupons and discounts. But when you get refunds from things, bank them, don't spend them, don't see them as good, we can fix our driveway money, but rather put them in the bank for your future. And if you do, and if you do it long enough, and you, I have many couples who will live on one income only, and the other income spouse will save 100% of their income. They'll live on one income only. They're assuring their future. And that's exactly what it's all about. Prepare for your future when your paychecks will stop and be overfunded rather than like most of the retirees I see who all say, I want to retire early. Do I have enough? It ought to be enough. And if I tell them it won't, they'll go to another advisor who will tell them it's enough and they'll go to that advisor and get out. And they're making a big mistake over a long number of years, especially if they have good health. Don't follow the mistakes of the people who are making them. Apply good, healthy principles, live healthy, live long, and good financial healthy principles, and make your money last long. All right, folks, that's it for today's show. You can always give me a call. I can help you design plans like this. I appreciate your tuning into All Things Financial, and I'll be back again next week. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Sage Point Financial Inc., member FINRA, SIPC, and registered investment advisor. Insurance services offered through Driscoll Insurance and Financial Services Inc., which is not affiliated with Sage Point Financial Inc.